Mark, uh, just, you know, two wins on the spin isn't the season done and sorted, but it's it's very, very useful. Just tell us some of the some of the effects that that kind of thing has, other than the obvious of of putting you in a better position than you were, you know, before them around the place. What what you know, how does it change things? I think it just calms people down a little bit. Uh you know, people are really apprehensive and you know, when when things aren't going our way and what I try and be is I try and be the same person even when you know things haven't been going well and we, we always have the same focus of, of, of what we want to do and what we want to achieve, i.e. getting better every day on the pitch and working hard. So that focus never changes. But what it does, you know, when, 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 when you lose games and you're in the position we're in, then there's that kind of nervousness becomes around the place and it's, it's a natural reaction from a human being to, to be apprehensive and things like that. And it's my kind of job to help, you know, kind of manage those situations and keep the focus driving towards what we want to do. So when, when, when we do get victories and, 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 and two on the spin, like, like you said, it's, it's really, really good. Of course it is. Uh, but it's important that we keep our focus, you know, just as it has been really focused, really wanting to improve and wanting to get better. But it just gives us that little bit of a breathing space and just calms everybody down a little bit. So, you know, that's been the case after the two performances and two two victories. Uh, but I've said straight after each and every one of them that we need to keep moving forward. It's We've got a, a lot, a lot of work to do in a short space of time. And we've got to be so focused and driven to, to achieve our goals that, you know, we can't take our foot off the gas at any one point. So... That's kind of been the message uh, to the, to the players, and you know they've they've responded really really well, and you know we've trained today, and it's been difficult conditions in the wind and the and the and the conditions with the pitch with the rain and stuff like that, but the the focus and drive towards getting better every day and implement implementing our game plan has been fantastic. So yeah, just kind kind of keeping that same message going forward, but again, yeah, it does it gives us that little bit of get a little bit of calmness about the place, and obviously. Um, there are a lot of factors to dealing with a relegation situation and, and trying to escape it. And one of those factors is just a little bit of luck with results going your way elsewhere. And that's actually happened, hasn't it? And um, that's a that's a positive. That's a bonus. Yeah, of course it is. And people say, were you watching the games? Were you looking out for the games? Yeah, of course I was. I paid £10 to watch the, uh, the Accrington and uh, Plymouth game the other day. So I was watching that at home. So... Uh, yeah, of course we look out for results, but we we can't control that. We can't control what other teams do. Other teams are fighting. Other teams will be. Other managers will be sat in a position I'm sat in now and speaking about how their focus is going on and how they're driving towards uh, achieving their goals. So we can't re really worry about other teams. All we can concentrate on is, is what we do, our mindset, our mindset. Like I said before, to improve every day and get better every day, to challenge each other every day, uh, as a staff and as a group of players to challenge each other. And to, and to really, really push forward. Uh, so we can control that. We can't control other things. Yes, things have gone our way, but I'm sure up until the end of the season, results won't go our way. Uh, and that'll be the case. So there'll be lots of ups and downs. We know that. All we can focus on is what we're doing. And that's what we are doing. It's in your hands again, though, isn't it? Which is, which is another bonus, isn't it? It's back in your hands. Yeah, it's, it's about what we do. It all, it's always it is about what we do. Uh, you know, sometimes... You know, teams will be ahead of us and have games in hand and stuff like that. But it's how we approach every game we play, and we want we want to win every game we play. Uh, we we want to go in with a mindset that we want the three points, and and that won't change. It hasn't. It's been the case since I've come in. We haven't always got that, uh, but it'll be my focus now and our focus towards the end of the season to go and win every game. We just had a conversation with with uh, with the skipper Dean Lewington, of course, and. Um, not sure there's anything left to say about Dean, if I'm honest with you, um, from your time going back the many years that we've spoken to him. But but just if you can try and describe, you know, the impact that his return to the to the squad playing and side is, you know, what how, what kind of impact's it been? Yeah, I'm sure, and, and I'm sure the words what are going to come out of my mouth now you've heard before. Uh, but in a short time, I've worked with Dean since I came in, but also since he came back on the pitch as well. Uh, he, he, he's a terrific leader. Uh, he leads by example. He leads by uh, vocally using his voice and experience. Uh, so he's an all-round leader in that in that respect. 
Uh, he's such a calm and influence to, to the players around him, uh, which is which is essential on the pitch uh, during during difficult times. Uh, and he's a player who has tremendous football ability, but kind of leadership ability as well. And and that's been apparent in the, in not only the past two games when he's been back. But when he's been around the place as, as well, and particularly when he's getting back into training and in and around the training ground, uh, you know he's he's a big influence to the to the players in the squad. So, you know, I'm sure you've heard that before from previous managers he's worked with, and you know he's he's he's, he's, he's a great character and he's a great footballer to have in our team at this minute. Um, and up next. Uh, <laughs> the games, the great games keep on coming. You, you've got more, which we'll talk about in a moment. But Jonathan Lecco returns and is available for selection, and a, a, another little boost for the side, another boost in energy and and, and attacking prowess in the side. Yeah, it, it gives another element to to our game having having Jonathan back. What he brings to the game is a directness. You know, he's it, powerful. Uh, he can create. He can score. Uh, so him coming back into contention it really, really, really boosts the squad, uh, and I think we're in a position now where, you know, probably in the past we were looking at kind of, you know, who's going to play what position. We were moving people about, but hopefully now that the, 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 these these kind of suspensions are coming back, injuries are coming back as well. The, the squad is getting stronger and stronger every week for the running, and that's uh, it's, it's coming at a crucial time for us. So having that competition for places. Having those experienced players coming back is really, really vital. Of course, they've got to fight for their place like it, like it, like everybody else. And that's why I say that everybody wants to go out on the training pitch every day to try and get better, to improve, to try and get into that starting eleven uh, and, and, and impact the game. So, yeah, to have those calibre of players coming back is, is great for us. And you've got a tough decision, really, because the side's won two games on the spin without Jonathan Lecco. You know, Jonathan Lecco is a clearly talented footballer who offers you something, you know, very positive up front, but you've both difficult decisions like that, you're quite happy with at the moment. Yeah, you know, so that's my job. I, I need to make decisions, you know, we make I make informed decisions as regards to what we need, where we are, levels of performance. Uh we take into account the opposition, of course we do. We're not driven by that. Uh we like to take care of what we can do. Uh but you know consistency is important, of course it is. But if you know, if I feel that we need to tweak something or change something, uh, then then I'll do that. You know, Will Grigg was out with the team for a little bit, and he came back in into the starting eleven against Accrington because I felt that was the right thing to do in that particular game. Uh, you know, and I'll have to make those decisions from now until the end of the season. So I'm quite comfortable with that. Uh, you know, I work with my staff uh, to to discuss what we're going to do, and then ultimately, you know, I make that decision and and we deliver a team on Saturday what we feel can win the game. How's Anthony Stewart getting on? I suppose it's about the time we get kind of regular updates about Anthony because you said he was back kind of warming up. How's it going? Yeah, he's been back in, I'd say, part training this week, which has been really, really good. So every day he's been building up. Uh, last week he just took, uh, was taking part in warm-ups uh, and, and kind of activation passing drills. But this week he's, he's taken a more active role. Still not in full training. Uh, if everything goes well this week, he'll be in full training next week. Uh, and if he comes through that, you know, he'll be available for selection. So, again, another another big boost for us as regards to calibre of player, uh, leadership qualities within a player, experience in a player coming back in as well. So, you know, that's great for him. And it's great to see the smile on his face as well, because it's been a really, really tough time for, for Anthony since he came in, you know, to come in and have two training sessions uh, to, to meet new teammates and, 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 and kind of want to come in and make an impact and have that taken away from you is, is difficult for him. But he's conducted himself well. Uh, he's been around the players. He's, 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 he's given his experience and, and thoughts on certain aspects. Uh, and he's been working really, really hard with the, with the medical staff. So, again, credit to them as well for getting him back. He looks in good shape. But we're not quite there yet. But, you know, we're getting closer and closer with it. And just finally from me, um, I kind of know the answer I'm going to get. Mark, but I, I'm going to throw this in there anyway. Um, you know how how important is getting something from that Morecambe? I mean, they're all important, obviously, but some of the fixtures up and coming are toughies: Derby away, Portsmouth at home. Just you need those points under your belt, really. 
Yeah, it's a big one for us. We can't shy away from anything and say, well, it's not important. We can we can pick up points here. We we, we we've got to go out with a mindset to win the game. Uh, and it's they'll be exactly the same. Their manager, like I said, their manager will be sat doing doing his interview as well, and he'll be talking the same. Uh, so it's about who can deal with uh, the situation and the magnitude of the game because it is a big game. You know, we've experienced that over recent weeks and we've come through those experiences really, really well. So hopefully, you know, we've got we've got confidence within ourselves to go and do that. But we have to be mindful and we have to be respectful of the threat that, that Morecambe will pose and they will pose a threat to us. So we need to be ready for that. We need to nullify that and we need to be ready to impose our game on them as well. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a massive game. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be looking for three points and we'll be doing everything we can to get that. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Cheers. I just asked Dean Lewington a, a similar question to the one I'll, I'll pose you here. Um, when you came in, you'll have obviously had ideas of how you'd have wanted MK Dons to play, and you know you'll have played a few games. You'll have seen, you know, potentially limitations in, in in what you thought. Have there been sort of elements of of your grand plan that you've almost had to park in the short term, just to try and get out of trouble and not necessarily win by any means necessary, but just just get more of the job done and, and ensure that Dons stay up. Yeah, I would say there's, there's there's elements of of what we're going to do, and I think they've been driven by kind of the injuries we've got, uh, the availability of, of certain players, and what we want to do. So that's been driven by that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, my, my, my longer term vision is, is is playing a certain way. I think we've we've tried to implement that, and we are implementing that a, a lot of the the games we've played. We we are doing that. Uh, we don't want to change the identity of what the club is. We, I'm clear on that, and that's how I want to play my style of football. Is you know having the ball more than the opposition. Has that been the case in every game? No, this 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 year for varying reasons. But that's ultimately what we try and do: is to dominate the game and dominate possession. We want to we want to build. We want to be a creative team. Uh, what I've tried to instil as well is the out of possession work we do. Is how quickly we win the ball back and how we press, and the intensity of how we do that. Uh, and then trying to create kind of that wave mentality where we want to try and pen teams in. We can build from our goalkeeper, of course, we want to do that. But we don't want to dominate the ball in our own half. We want to dominate the ball in the opposition half uh, and, and, and keep the ball in there and, and use our attacking prowess to, to, to create chances and score goals. Uh, so I think in elements of the game, since I've come in, you've seen elements of that together. Has it all fit together like a perfect jigsaw? No, not yet. And that's going to take time, and there've been varying uh, circumstances which have dictated that, like I've said. Uh, but ultimately, that's a goal. And, and, and every day, we see signs improving in training. We see players uh, grasp, grasping the concepts and the behaviours of what we want. Uh, so I've been fairly happy with it. Uh, could it be better? Yes, of course. Uh, but you know, that's why that's why I say we strive every day to get better. And that's just not the players, that's us as staff and as a team working together in and around the club. So that's what we'll do and we'll continue to do that till the end of the season. Is it something probably more due in the summer then, do you think? You know, you, you can probably put it, put your plans, or well, more of your plans into place because you've got that long period without games, you've got that opportunity to, to really drill it into them in that pre-season set, uh, sort of session. I think a pre-season and that, that amount of time for any, any manager is, is essential. Uh, I think it gives you a chance to cement your 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 ideas and how you want to play uh, in, in in all the different moments of the game. It also you know helps you build on the culture, and we've got a good culture within the club, so it helps you kind of build with on that and evolve it and develop it. And that that period of time in in a pre season or in a close season is is, is vital because there's an element of calmness within that as well. Uh, you know, in the in the mist. Of a, of, a, of a relegation battle, it's it's difficult to get everything in. You've got time constraints as well, particularly when you're dealing with injuries. So, you know, I'd say for any manager that 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 pre-season period is a is a vital time where you can start to really cement the foundations of what you want to do uh, and and really refine every other little thing in all moments of the game. And just finally, you know, we, we mentioned when you we first brought him in that Max Dean was going to be one of these players who we might see float in, might see float out in the team. You know, we've seen him more and more often become that little annoyance when he when he comes on, particularly late in second halves. How how impressed have you been with his with his mentality since since making the move? 
Yeah, and I know what Max is about, and that's why we brought him to the club because I knew his potential. I've said this before, we knew his potential, and that's what it is. It's it's potential for him. And we said he will impact uh this season. Of course he will. And he showed that in, in the rules he's, he's he's come on in, even on, on Saturday. He had a great chance to score. I would have backed him to score there, to be honest with you. Uh, but again, he got himself in that position. He, he worked hard from a physical point of view, you know, towards the end of the game where he was up there by himself and he was he was making the runs and pressing and closing down. Uh, but yeah, he's a character. You know, the fans seem to love him. The players are really, really warm to him as well. I think for any young player coming to a club, I think when you start to get the respect of, of, of your peers within the dressing room, particularly the senior players, then that's a big, big moment for any player. Uh, but like I say to him all the time, you've got to keep, he's got to keep working hard. Uh, I think Dino knows our relationship to know that I'll be on him every single day. Uh, we've got Robbie Stockdale, who's who wants to be that person as well, because he sees the potential in him, but he also sees you know that he needs pushing every day. Uh, and he'll tell you that, Max will tell you that, and I think he thrives from that. So, yeah, I won't be changing my tact with him. I'll be I'll be hard on him when needs to be, and, uh, you know, I'll put my hand around him and tell him he's done well when he needs that as well. Uh, but he definitely needs a mixture of both.